Oh yeah, that's way better. Caster is good. Welcome back to the shop. It's been a long time. It's been an interesting summer. Uh, I had planned um, a bunch of projects and a bunch of videos and everything just kind of went sideways. So we're in the shop working on the Mustang again. Uh, there were supposed to be some videos of the GTO. Um, I got really, really sick for several weeks. That stuff didn't happen. I had to withdraw from Miles of Mayhem race. Uh, so the whole summer kind of went uh, sideways. But um, I don't know when this video is going to get posted because I'm in mad thrash mode now trying to get the Mustang ready for drag week, hoping that I don't get sick before that and I get to that race. So one of the things that we need to do with the Mustang is in street condition, I've got really big tall rear tires on the thing to try and bleed off some of the gearing. As a result, the car has got kind of a stink bug stance to it now. And uh, as a result of that, I've got like zero caster in the front uh, steering. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of a handful going down the highway with no caster because you can't take your eyes off the road for a second. I mean, like you were steering like uh, constantly to keep the car going straight. So it's long overdue for a set of caster camber plates. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, we're going to take out the old style onion heads that have been in there forever with my ancient Coney SPA1 shocks uh, or struts more correctly and we're going to put in some caster camber plates. So I'm going to dial in about two degrees of caster uh, with the street tires on it knowing that when I put the race tires on it they're a lot shorter. The car is going to level out and that's going to create even more caster. So I don't want to go crazy on the caster but um, some is better than zero. So that's the plan. Let's get after it. Before we get any further with the install, the educator in me feels like I need to explain what caster is for those that might not know. If we look at the side of the car, caster is the angle between the vertical and the axis of rotation for the steering mechanism uh, in the front suspension. And positive caster is going to create a situation where the steering axis intersects the ground in front of the center of the tire contact patch. Um, and again, the difference between vertical and that steering axis is our, uh, our caster angle. By having this intersect the ground in front of the steering, uh, in front of the tire contact patch, um, it forces the tire to follow um, that virtual point, that virtual intersection. So if the tire steps out, um, you know, laterally uh, in either direction, uh, a moment or a torque is going to be created that's going to try and bring that center of the tire back in line behind this intersection point here. So uh, if you've ever tried flat towing a car, you can pull the car in one direction and the steering wheels will actually automatically turn uh, in that direction. And that's the caster effect here. Um, again, a torque is going to be created uh, that wants the tire to center the tire to follow uh, that virtual intersection of that steering angle. Now, bad things happen if you do this in reverse. If you pull the car um, backwards, then having this tire contact patch out in front of our virtual intersection here uh, is going to create an unstable situation and the steering wheels will go to full lock either right or left. Um, immediately. If you've ever tried uh, towing a car in reverse, this is, uh, this is what happens. But in the forward direction, uh, this is a self-stabilizing thing, uh, so it's a, it's a good thing. Now, a little bit of caster is a good thing. A lot, of it, a lot of caster can be a bad thing because the more caster angle you have, the greater this moment arm becomes and the greater the steering torque uh, becomes. So the steering effort uh, is going to go up um, with increasing caster angle. So um, I'm shooting for two degrees. Um, that shouldn't have a huge impact on um, steering effort, but if I had like, you know, nine or 10 degrees of caster in there, then I'm definitely going to feel that um, on the steering wheel, and I don't want uh, that much. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to double check what our camber is. I had this thing on an alignment machine last summer, and the camber was pretty close to nothing. Um, and that's when we found that we had no caster. 
So I've leveled the lift as best as I can, and we're going to check on both sides. There is, you know, maybe a quarter of a degree um, on the lift that it's not dead level. So on this side, we're showing that we're about uh, not even half a degree of negative camber. And I checked on the other side. I'm not going to bore you with that. But on the other side, we were showing a half a degree uh, of negative camber. So the difference between those two sides, I'm going to attribute to the lift not being absolutely level. But with this measurement now, we can go and we can measure the tops uh, of the strut. So let's do that next. Actually, before we start measuring the strut, I wanted to point out one thing. I've jacked up the front end about an inch and a half now, which is representative for how the car goes down the racetrack. Like, the front end is going to come up, obviously, when we launch, but it doesn't settle all the way back down going down the track. So even going across the finish line, the front end is going to be up a little bit. And as the front end goes up, the suspension articulates, and that little bit of negative camber that we had at static ride height has now gone away. So now the gauge is showing that we are at absolutely zero static camber. And that's perfect. So for the attitude that the car is going to have going down the track, we want zero camber. We've got zero camber. So we need to make sure that when we install the caster camber plates that we can reproduce this condition exactly. Now let's go and measure the struts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure and record where the strut is relation, in relationship to the, to the car so that when we put the caster camber plates in there, we can get the strut in the same location well, and then we're going to lay it back, and we're going to actually do the math on how much we need to lay it back. It's pretty simple trigonometry uh, to get like our two degrees of, of caster. But right now, the way it sits, we've got zero caster. So the first measurement we're going to take is to the side of the fender, and it looks like we're at five and five eighths inches this way. So we're going to mark that five six two five that way and then we're going to measure to the uh, to the bolt on the firewall here because it's um, it's right in the way of where we want to measure but uh, that'll work and we are at ten and three quarters inches in that direction so ten point seven five that way then we'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we can take everything apart and go from there. Before we can take this whole thing off, we need to get rid of the factory rivet that's in here. So we're just going to drill that out. And judging from the other holes here, it looks like 3 16 is the size that we need. So we'll get that in the drill, and we'll get the rivets out on both sides. Next thing we need to do is get this thing uh, up on jack stands, get the wheels off, so we can start pulling the struts out from the, from the bottom. So let's do that next. So one of the other things I got to deal with while we're in the neighborhood here is you can see the ball joint boot is completely ripped and torn and it's the same on the other side. So we're actually going to um, split the lower ball joint here off the spindle um, and replace that boot while we're in the operation here of uh, doing the caster camber plates too. And in the end, it might make this whole, it might make this whole job a little bit easier. but. Um, I don't know if we um, I don't know if we can actually get the caster camber plates uh, in there without actually removing the whole strut. We're gonna 
we're going to try. We're going to see what happens. If I have to remove the whole strut, then we're going to have to pull off the caliper, and we'll just hang that off to the side so I don't have to disconnect the hose, um, and we'll split uh, this tie rod end off here as well so that we can just take the whole spindle off and uh, um, spindle and, and strut assembly off uh, as one, one piece. With the floor jack under the lower control arm, we're taking the load off of this so we can actually undo this um, nut now. Now we're not going to take it off all the way, but we're going to... We're just going to leave it on by a couple of threads just in case things go, uh, go sideways down there. And um, uh, this is just a safety measure until we can get the rest of the stuff um, undone. Then we can spin this off and then pull the strut out. So let's get the rest of that stuff out now. Hopefully, if the camera was working, uh, you saw me uh, take the tie rod off, and you also saw me use a pickle fork uh, to break the, the ball joint here. Um, normally, the pickle, pickle fork is something you don't want to use because it tears up the, the boot, but since my boot was already torn up, um, I'm not going to make it any, uh, any worse. So at this point, I can lower the jack a bit, and oh, we'll take the, uh, take the top nut off the strut and we can take our ball joint nut off and ideally I should be able to just lift this up and well I have to compress the strut a bit so we're going to jack it up a bit compress the strut a bit and now we're going to let it down, and hopefully the top of the strut comes out. And if it doesn't seem like it is. No. All right. Why does the strut not want to come out? Let me get something to stand on. might have to persuade it a bit. Oh, it's coming out. That's partly out. It's just not out far enough. There we go. We'll just help it along a bit. Oh. Oh, I can't take that off without taking the rotor off because it hits the control arm. Well, dang it. That was more work than I wanted to do. I gotta take the rotor off. All right, time for the, uh, the greasy gloves. Finally at the point where we can take this thing out. Yay! Look at that. So we'll take off the onion head and then we'll uh, get our caster camber plate set up in there 
and then put this all back together again with a new boot. All right, at this point, we'll uh, buzz the rest of the onion head off. And I'll get a hand underneath to catch this thing. There it is, our old onion head. So all of that goes and gets replaced with the new setup now. All right, with the onion head out, this thing is gonna go in there, but before I put it in there, I got some modifications to do. As usual, aftermarket stuff is crap. Uh, there's no quality control, so how this works is these two bushings go on the strut like that, and this shoulder part here fits inside this bearing, but as you can see, that one doesn't fit. That one doesn't fit. So we're gonna go over to the lathe and we're gonna take a little bit off of these things until they fit in there. So next up, machining. All right, so I got this little joke of a lathe and it's perfect for stuff like this, but we're just gonna machine the tiniest little bit off of both of these shoulders so that they fit uh, in that bearing. So we'll start with the big one. See how we did. It's still too tight. Okay, we want a tight fit. We don't want it to rattle around, but we don't want to be able to hammer the thing in there and then never get it apart again. So we'll give this a tiny little bit more. time for sure. There we go. Okay, it's nice and tight. So we'll do the other one and then we'll do the uh, corresponding bushings for the other side while we're at it uh, too and then we'll get back to the car. Now that we've got our bushings machined so that they actually fit in here, I've got the tall bushing on the strut already but uh, we need to put this thing in place. So we're gonna take the nuts off, take the washers off, or they'll take themselves off. Okay, so this is gonna come up from underneath. Like that. That's gonna go on top. And then washer, bolt, washer, nut, that was a nut, not a bolt, washer, and nut, okay, and we're going to get this thing, we're going to measure to get this thing roughly to where we want it to maintain our zero camber. Um, and snug it up. And same thing with our uh, initial zero caster. And then we'll go do the math and figure out exactly how much further we need to move it back to get two degrees of, uh, of caster. So let's get the tape measure. 
Okay, so this is initial. Again, we measured to the middle of the stud on the strut, but this is going get, to get us close. So we were at 5 and 5 eighths, so we're way off. So we want to be all the way that way. Okay, and then we wanted 10.75, which puts us actually pretty close to right there. So try this again. 10.75, so back a little bit. And I'll get an Allen wrench in a second. We'll snug that up. Okay. And um, then we'll put the strut back in. All right, the other thing that we've got to do when I took the onion head off, uh, underneath the onion head, this is like the tip of the iceberg, literally, uh, we have the bellows, and inside the bellows is our bump stop. So we need to make sure that we put in uh, a new bump stop and bellows. So this is just an aftermarket setup. So again, we've got the lower bushing on here already. I've got the new boot. I've, I've cleaned up and I've greased uh, as best as I could. I've packed this with, uh, with grease, but we got the new boot on the lower ball joint. So at this point, I'm going to separate the strut as much as I can. And this doesn't fit really well. So hmm, I wonder if I got the bellows on upside down. I bet you I did. Yeah, that way it doesn't fall over the shock body. So squeeze this guy back on. Spacer in. Okay, and okay, we've got that end in. multi-person job. Or we can just start the bottom and then jack it up until I can get the strut in far enough that oh man this is this is going to be a pill. All right, we got it started in there, but the challenge we've got now is to try and push the strut shaft um, up far enough to where I can catch a couple of threads, and that means that that spherical bearing's got to be aligned perfectly, and it's really, really tight. So when I jack up the lower control arm, all it's doing is compressing the strut and not driving the shaft up uh, through here. So we're going to jiggle everything around, we're going to jack things up, and we're going to hope for success. Oh, there we go. All right, look at that. Okay, so we can put, well, ideally, if the uh, bearing was aligned, that would slide right in there, but the bearing's not aligned, so we need punch and a hammer, and we'll give it some taps. This is working without a net, without a fender cover on this thing. There we go. Get our nut started, and we can draw it the rest of the way in. 
until it just starts turning round and round and round. But we can put an Allen bolt, uh, sorry, we can put an Allen, that's not the right size, but um, we can put an Allen wrench in here and then pull this thing in the rest of the way with a wrench. Alright, that is tight, so now we'll go back and again we're going to measure to the middle of the strut stud and we want 5 and 5 eighths and we've got 5 and 5 eighths and for zero caster we want 10 and 3 quarters and wow look at that, we've got exactly 10 and 3 quarters. Okay, so we're going to go back down under and put all the rest of that stuff back together. Um, I've got to get new grease seals and I've got to repack the bearings now because I have to pull the hubs off. So that'll slow me down a day. But once we get all that back together and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, I'm not going to bore you with going through all of that again. Uh, but once we've got the car at ride height, we can measure the height from the lower ball joint to this upper ball joint here. And that's going to be our length for our trigonometric measurement to figure out how far we need to move this thing back to get the two degrees of caster. Again, stay in school, kids. It's simple trig. All right, so to set our caster, we need a measurement. So we can do that trigonometry here. And uh, going from, make sure I'm right on the top there. Uh, going from the uh, top of the strut tower to the middle of the ball joint here and it looks like it's about oh, we got a better measurement there okay so it looks like we're about 23 and a half inches and uh, the upper ball joint I measured it is another inch uh, above the top of the strut tower so um, our total length here is 24 and a half inches so to get two degrees of caster we need to do some simple trig all right, so we've measured from the lower ball joint to the upper ball joint, and that total distance was 24 and a half inches. What we want is we want a two degree angle there. So we can whip out our handy little portable brain here, and we can take 24.5, multiply that by the tangent, of two degrees and we get 0.769 or 0.77 so we want this distance here to be 0.77 inches so from the zero caster position that we've got right now we want to pull that thing back uh, 0.77 inches towards the firewall to get us the two degrees of caster once we've done that on both sides, we'll go back and we'll use our, our fancy alignment gauge um, and we'll double check that to make sure that we indeed do have two degrees of caster. All right, so we had 10 and three quarter was our measurement before, which according to the alignment shop gave us zero caster. So our calculation says that we need to move this back a little more than three quarters of an inch. So, whoops, that's going in the wrong direction already. Okay, we're going to need to pry this thing forward because it wants to go the other way. So let me grab a pry bar. And we're going to pry this thing. until our measurement is about 10 inches. So, a bit more. Of course, we're going to have to, you know, recheck our camber after this again. Okay, right about there. We'll, we'll try that. it's tight and we'll go and do the same thing on the other side 
and then we'll use our, our fancy uh, gauge and we'll, uh, we'll double check. So let's do the other side and then let's see what the gauge tells us. So here's our fancy alignment gauge. And first thing you got to do is make sure the thing is level. So we've got the tiny little bubble there and right about there. Um, we're dead level and we can read that we're at zero negative and zero positive camber right now. So the procedure to set caster is for the left side, we're on the driver's side of the car right now. Uh, we're going to turn this wheel 20 degrees this way. We're going to zero this thing out. We're going to turn the wheel 20 degrees the other way. And then we can read directly what the caster is um, on here. Now, fortunately, the angles on the end of this thing are 20 degrees. And I've got the car completely squared up on the lift. So using a straight edge on here, I can eyeball when we're at 20 degrees uh, to the lift in both directions. So let's go do that. All right, so following the procedure, we can read what our caster is and hopefully you can see this with a bit of a reflection going on, but we've got about two, not quite two and a half degrees of caster on this side. So I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna quibble over a half a degree. So we're gonna go and do the exact same thing on the other side of the car and uh, call it done. So there we are, caster camber plates are in. We got a bit of caster now. We had none before, so this should make the car a lot more stable on the highway. And we're one step closer to being ready for drag week. So the only special tool that I needed was the long acre, and there's Chinese knockoffs of this thing too, but uh, caster camber gauge. So we did quite a bit. You could do quite a bit with just a, a regular level. Um, and if you know where your starting point was, and I did because again, I had this thing at an alignment shop last year. So I knew I had zero caster on both sides and my camber was um, pretty close to zero. So with some measurements and a bit of trigonometry, you can actually get yourself pretty close. And, and we did. So what we calculated and how much we moved uh, the strut back towards the firewall uh, gave us, um, we ended up with uh, a little more than two degrees of positive camber, sorry, caster on that side. And we ended up with about two and a half degrees of positive caster on this side and pretty close to zero camber um, on both sides too. Nothing that I did here should affect the toe. The toe was already good. So we're gonna leave that alone. So anyway, we're happy with what we've got done today. Um, and uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I do appreciate the comments uh, and the thumbs up. Uh, and as usual, be kind and be humble. We'll see you next time. And there you go. That's how to install caster camera plates. And uh, uh, yeah, take two. Oh man, I sound like a spaz with these uh, Invisalign braces and I really should have taken them out. <sighs> and we're out.